Good morning. It's great to see you today and I hope that you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'm looking forward to our having a little time to study in God's Word together today. We're, we're reading and thinking today about some things in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 21. Now we've, we've looked at all of the teachings that, that Paul made in this section about what a wonderful thing it is for us to be rescued from that power of the devil and to be transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. And we've seen how Jesus is God in the flesh and that all things were created by him and he's the head over the body, the church, that he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And, and so some amazing things about Jesus, our Savior and Lord. But then Paul turns his attention back to the church itself and, and to the people that are in Colossae and things about them. Notice, notice what he says in these few verses. And although you were previously alienated and hostile in attitude, engaged in evil deeds, yet he has now reconciled you to his own, in his own body of flesh through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Indeed, if indeed, you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. Now, I want to think about that little section. And just all of the things that, that Paul says in this that I think affects our life in so many ways. When he looked at the church as it was, and, and remember Paul has praised this congregation. He had never been there, but his his student Epaphras had started that church, and it, it, it was just going great. Now, they had some problems, and among those were some of the problems that he's addressed about Jesus. They had had some false teachers come in and present ideas about Jesus just being a man and not God in any way, or even if God, then a lesser God. And so, uh, Paul is combating that notion as he pictures Jesus as the very one who created all things, the one that, that is the force behind all of creation, the firstborn from the dead, and, and the one that is the first of God's, or firstborn of God's creation, in the sense that he is the one that brought it all into being, the force behind that creation of the world. But, but look at then that turn as he looks at them. He said, I want you to remember, first of all, where you came from. One of the important things in every one of our lives, when we have made that commitment to God and we're striving to live that Christian life every day. It's important to remember where we've come from. It's important to remember the sinful life. There was that time in all of our lives when we previously were alienated and hostile in attitude and engaged in evil deeds. There's not any of us that, that have lived such holy and godly lives all the time that we, we really don't need that forgiveness and grace from God that we somehow deserve it. No, not, not any of us are there. All of us have struggled with sin in our life. And, and all of us have been alienated from God at some point in our life. We 
we have turned from that right way and have, have fallen into sin. And so he said, I want you to go back and think about that day when you were enemies of God, when you were, when you were involved in all kinds of evil deeds, when you were doing things that now you would look back on and be ashamed of. And say, well, I, boy, I don't, I don't like, like to think about the things that I was doing back in that day before I made that commitment to God, before I, I had that transfer out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. But then upon remembering that, he says, yet he has now reconciled you in his own body, the flesh, through death, in order to present you before him holy, blameless, and beyond reproach. What does it mean to be reconciled? It's interesting. The word literally means to become friends all over again. It is that notion that I, I was at some point the friend of God, but I allowed sin to come in and alienate me from the God of the universe. And now I've been reconciled. I've been brought back into that right relationship with God. You ever had a, a breakup of some kind, maybe... Maybe just an argument with your wife or husband or, or something with a child or maybe a parent. That you, you had something to happen that just alienated you from each other. But then that amazing time came when you came back together again. And, and you were reconciled to one another. One of the amazing things in, in life is that often when we are reconciled to one another, we become closer than we'd ever been before. That that alienation from one another actually developed in us a greater hunger for that, that loving and caring relationship that had been there. And so we've been reconciled to God. Sin alienates us. God brings us back. He reconciles us. But notice how. He says he reconciles us in his body of flesh through death. See, Jesus, when becoming a man, as when he was emptied himself of the powers and the wonders of the Godhead to become one of us, to become a baby born of the Virgin Mary, and then to grow up in that home and in Nazareth and, and learn to be a carpenter, and then to spend three and a half years in ministry, as, as he would choose those 12 apostles, and then he would send them out on the limited commission, and then send out 72 others on a limited commission, training them for what they would do. But then that day would come when the devil would, would so move the religious leaders in Jerusalem, the Jewish leaders, of that, of that whole community that he would turn them so against Jesus that they would have him crucified. It seems amazing. That religious people who believed in God and wanted to do his will would murder his son. But they did. They, they had the Romans to get involved and to put him to death on a cross. But now listen, it was important that he die that death 
because he was taking our sins upon him. And he, the innocent one, who was tempted in every way as we are yet without sin, became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So it is through that body of flesh and the death of that body on the cross that we are able to be presented before God as holy and blameless and beyond reproach. That's so amazing. You think about ones that are completely separated from God because of sin. But Jesus in his blood and the pouring out of that blood on the cross made it possible to bring us back together and not just bring us back together, but to turn us away from that sinful life so that we would live a holy, a separated life from the sin, that that we were, were pulling ourselves away from that. It's not that we never sin now, but it ought to be that I'm moving farther and farther away from that sinful life and closer and closer to my Lord so that I become more holy all the time, more separated from the sin and and closer to God. But he said, not only do you become holy, you become blameless. That I'm no longer the one that is so guilty that I deserve blame from God. But I become the innocent, the blameless. And, And he said, we become beyond reproach that we've moved past that kind of life that can be a reproach to God and to all that are trying to live for God. And so what an amazing thing that, that we can have that kind of friendship relationship with our God, that he would pay the price for our sins in the body of Jesus on that cross that we might be beyond all reproach. Boy, that's just such an amazing concept that, that God could look down on folks that had all kinds of sin problems and say, because of what my son will do for you on that cross, I'm going to make you blameless. I'm going to make you holy. I'm going to make you beyond all reproach. And that's amazing. But then notice the final thing that he says about it. If indeed. Now watch this. You continue in the faith. It's extremely important that I become the one that's reconciled. That I become the one that's holy and blameless and above reproach. But notice in order to maintain that relationship, it is if I continue in that life of faith firmly established and steadfast and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you've heard. That same gospel that's been preached to all the world. Paul said, here, that, that, that gospel had now reached out to everybody, but that hope of the gospel is heaven itself. And he said, you've got to hold on to that. And if you maintain that relationship of faith and dedication to God, you keep that hope of the gospel clearly in front of you that you're moving in that direction of glory and the the relationship with God in heaven all the time, then you live in that that cleansed and holy relationship with God. What an amazing thing. God bless you.